Indiana was 10th in pace. Christie side selling as Clark rattles her second three. They wanted the offensive foul. Not going to get it. Caitlin Clark with her two. Oh, outside. outside Clark again. That is absolutely what she does. So here we go again. Welcome back to the Dark Times channel. And before we get started, make sure you go ahead and hit that like button for me. And if you're not new to the channel and you enjoy the content so far on this channel, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me as well. And so let's go ahead and dive right in. As you may or may not know already, Caitlin Clark had her debut last night, her first game in the WNBA, and she did not disappoint. Last season, Clark gets away with a little push. Fall away, buries it. And Veronica Burton put the ball on the deck and attacked the back. Oh, what a oh, slick pass. That was a big time performance. She did a lot of things out there that I don't see women do, that I haven't seen women do. It's almost like she's playing at a different speed than a lot of those girls out there. She's got the body of a 15 year old boy, but she's deceptively strong out there and faster and quicker than everybody else on the floor. And so that's definitely to her advantage. And watching the game last night, Caitlin is a lot more shiftier than I thought she was. And so she's transforming the game right before our eyes. And then on top of that, she's got the strength to be able to shoot that thing from almost half court. I've never seen a woman be able to do that with that kind of accuracy and consistency. You know, it's one thing to have somebody shoot a half court shot or a shot from deep every now and then and for it to go in. And usually when you see a woman shoot that kind of shot from that kind of distance, that form doesn't have that same consistency because they don't have the level of strength nine times out of 10 to be able to do that with that kind of accuracy. But Caitlin is definitely changing all that and she's making it look easy. And this is gonna be a good thing for the WNBA. This is gonna be a very good thing for the WNBA. And I said this in one of my previous videos, I thought that the way the NBA is headed and the style of play that the NBA does, I think that within the next two or three years, the WNBA can compete with the NBA as far as viewership. And a lot of people laughed at that in the comment section, but it is what it is. I still stand by that, especially after watching Caitlin play last night. Because if we're talking about sports entertainment, we're talking about drama. And nobody creates more drama naturally than women. And I'll say this about Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark has had been a similar impact on the WNBA and the game of basketball as Tiger Woods did with golf. I know that may be a hot take to some, but if you think about it, it's almost the exact same situation in reverse. We've got this young white woman from Iowa seemingly coming out of nowhere, somewhat of a phenom doing things that her peers aren't doing. That's the contrast that you need. You need the yin and the yang. You need the love and the hate. And the media knows this. The more they push Caitlin Clark, the more you're going to have a segment of people that can't stand Caitlin Clark. It's the Floyd Mayweather effect. It's the LeBron James effect. And something else I noticed when I was watching Caitlin play. Her style of play is somebody that is out there playing free. That's somebody that's out there and they know they have the green light to do whatever it is that they want to do. They have the confidence to be able to do whatever they want to do because they know they're not coming out of that game. That's the kind of confidence that Caitlin is carrying over from Iowa. And I believe that's the main reason why she went to an Iowa, to be able to have that green light from day one, to be able to know that whatever shot you shoot, I'm not coming out of this game because I'm the best option that they got. And then on top of that, if you don't play me, I can just transfer and you're never gonna get another Caitlin Clark to come back to Iowa. And so that was the best thing that Caitlin Clark could have did by going to Iowa, because if she goes to a Kentucky or she goes to a, a Yukon or a Tennessee or a North Carolina, a school like that, they're gonna put a lot more restrictions on her game. She's not gonna be able to shoot those 30 footers on the regular, not even in practice. I don't care who you are, there's too much talent on teams like that to have an individual player chunking up shots from 30 feet. You know, the super teams within college, especially with the NIL and the transfer and how things are now, I think it's gonna be a lot easier for, you know, these four and five star recruits 
to go to those smaller schools and to be able to establish themselves and build their confidence and not have to worry about a coach taking you out of game if you take a 30-footer or a 24-footer because you're feeling it. And I think it's going to open up the game of women's basketball and we're going to get a more entertaining product. Because I think the clamps have been on women's basketball because they have been going to these UConn schools. Not to say these schools aren't well coached, but I think for today's game and for entertainment value, I think a lot of these girls are being overcoached. And one of the downsides when you're being overly coached is that it stifles creativity. It may lead to you know a good brand of basketball. It may even lead to winning, especially if you have the talent around you. But the main thing that it does is it stifles creativity and therefore entertainment. And that's why a lot of people prefer to watch the NBA versus college. Yeah, you may get a better brand of basketball watching college as far as fundamentals, but people don't tune in to watch fundamentals. People tune in to be entertained. People tune in to see something and witness something that they've never seen before. And so, like I said, Caitlin Clark is definitely transforming the game right before our eyes. And this style of play and the way she's playing and the kind of drama and entertainment that's you know, being brought to the game. I think it's not only going to bring more viewership as far as individuals watching, but I think we're going to have entire families watching the game of basketball, almost like it used to be. I think this style of play and how it's being played, I think it has a little something for everybody. And so it's going to be exciting to see, you know, within these next couple of months, how everything plays out, see what kind of drama unfolds. But that's all I had on this one. You guys go ahead and let me know how you feel about it in the comment section. And as usual, peace and chaos.